Africa, the continent where humanity first arose hundreds of millennia ago, is home to some of the most ancient ruins and monuments ever found. However, the civilizations that created these sites existed so long ago that they've been forever lost to the sands of time. Archaeologists have unearthed countless secrets across the vast landscape of Africa, and each find challenges everything we know about the origin of our species. Join us as we give you all the details about these unprecedented discoveries and the seemingly unanswerable questions they raise. The field of history relies heavily on analyzing ancient languages. Everything we know about the first civilizations in human history, from the Mesopotamians to the ancient Egyptians, comes from scholars spending years decoding their surviving texts. But what happens when they discover a site that has no writing at all? These finds raise more questions than they answer, and they've become elusive mysteries that even the greatest historical minds struggle to make sense of. One of the most peculiar sites discovered in Africa is the abandoned city of Gedi, located in modern-day Kenya. With desolate buildings surrounded by lush forests, the ruins are a haunting example of how even the wealthiest of civilizations can crumble without a trace. No one knows for sure who lived in this once great city, but archaeologists have found multiple relics that confirm its prestigious status along the Swahili coast. Based on the evidence, the city might have been built during the 11th or 12th century, and it lasted at least 400 years before being abandoned. The settlement reached the height of its influence during the 15th century. During this time, the city might have been wiped out by a military force or abandoned for some other reason. The inhabitants soon returned against all odds and continued to prosper more than most East African inhabitants. The ancient city appears to have been a powerhouse of its time. The presence of luxury goods from far-flung regions such as Ming vases from China and glass from Venice suggests that it was an important trading hub. Merchants traveled through the city, leaving behind precious commodities as they traded their way across the continent. Its location on the coast made it an ideal landing point for people returning from long voyages to distant lands. The city contains impressive monuments as well, including two great mosques. The Muslim inhabitants likely had close relations with other Islamic powers nearby, perhaps maintaining relations through seafaring voyages. These lavish places of worship also imply that the citizens of Gedi were quite wealthy. Despite this, there are no surviving written records describing the city. The city itself contains no writing to speak of, but there are still three languages that should have captured its heyday. The Portuguese had a major foothold in the region. Arab traders were known for their networks stretching across Africa. At the very least, local Swahili inhabitants had all the tools at their disposal to write about the city. They had every reason to, given how critical the city seems to have been in local trade. For some reason, none of these civilizations make any mention of Gedi. The fact that it was abandoned is yet another mystery. All we know is that its population basically vanished in the 17th century, and they never returned. With such a thriving economy, only a battle or plague would have forced the inhabitants out. No evidence of such evidence have been found. Since so little is known about the city, local tribes have come up with all sorts of mythological narratives about it. Some say that it's protected by jinns. Creatures from Arab folklore that can change shape are believed to avoid humans as much as possible. Others suggest that spirits known as the Old Ones guard the city, cursing anyone that comes close. Getty is just one of many secrets that the continent holds. On the other side of the African savanna in modern-day Nigeria, explorers found a series of intricately carved figures. These wide-eyed, eerie beings look like they're from another planet, and they're part of a grove that ancient tribes believe to be the home of a goddess. The Osun Sacred Grove, possibly named after the fertility goddess Oshun, is a core component of the area's folklore. Legend has it that humans and spirits once waged war against each other to control the land. It should be mentioned that this grove is just one of many that sprung up in the area over the centuries. In fact, every town had a sacred grove of their own. However, most of them were abandoned and forgotten. That's not the case with the Osun Grove. Created around 400 years ago, 
it's perhaps the largest sacred grove ever found. It also happens to be revered to this day, with around 40 shrines and numerous idols representing gods from the Yoruba pantheon. Many shrines were built in the last few decades, indicating that local people continue to build on the initial grove's legacy. And yet, looking at them up close can make your hair stand on end. Carved directly into the trees of the forest, these figures might represent gods like other idols found in the area. Even so, their strangely reptilian shape has raised questions about where they came from. Several animals are associated with Yoruba deities. That said, reptiles are generally not included in the pantheon. Could these figures be the remnant of a culture that we've yet to learn about? If so, what happened to the people that believed in these creatures? Though they look more like lizards than human beings, they also have strangely human characteristics. Their hands are outstretched toward the sky, as if they're praying to the gods above. That seems to refute the theory that they themselves are deities, as does their reptilian appearance. Humans usually associate important animals with their mythical figures. Sources of food, creatures that aid in agriculture, and others tend to take precedence. Why, then, would the creators of these carvings choose lizards of all things to deify? There's simply no explanation or at least none that easily comes to mind. Yet another secret hiding in Africa is that of the great ruins of Zimbabwe. Covering an astounding 385,000 square miles on the southern African plateau and comprising at least 500 buildings, this site defies all logic. For starters, the conical structures spaced out in the vast area don't have windows or doors. Though they're several dozen feet thick and a couple stories tall on average, they clearly weren't designed for human habitation. Of course, not all buildings are meant to serve as dwellings. Granaries and tombs usually don't need windows, but even they need a door or two to provide access. Whatever these structures were built for, the builders didn't want anyone getting in. Or perhaps they didn't want anyone getting out. Some of the structures are so close together that they form cramped pathways. However, it's unlikely that anyone was meant to travel through them. The tiny spaces are easy to get lost in, and the pathways seem to wind on forever. The purpose of these structures is obviously unknown, but even their design has puzzled observers for centuries. They're made of evenly carved stone bricks, each packed tightly into a grid that curves into an elliptical conical shape. It's an impressive display of masonry, but the builders somehow achieved this without the use of mortar. When Portuguese explorers first glimpsed the ruins in the 1600s, they asked nearby tribesmen about them. They didn't get any answers. Instead, the tribesmen called the ruins the work of the devil, and the lack of mortar and inexplicable masonry may have been a part of that. Apart from the structures themselves, Explorers have also found remnants of Chinese porcelain and Indian artwork, as well as jewels from Arabia. Carved figures of foreign gods, including a statue of the Roman goddess Venus, only added to the mystery. Among the relics, archaeologists found eagle figures made of soapstone placed next to statues of the Egyptian god Horus. This suggests some religious influence from the civilization along the Nile. The eagle figures appear to be unique to the region, so builders might have incorporated their own religious symbolism into Egyptian mythology. Contact between these two peoples might also mean that the Zimbabwean ruins were built by a mighty civilization, maybe even on par with the Egyptians themselves. Attempts have been made to connect the ruins to astronomy. Humans have been gazing at the night sky and finding meanings in the stars throughout our history and many ruins and ancient structures had astronomical significance. Unfortunately, even this line of reasoning led to a dead end. Why were these buildings made? Who constructed them? And how did artifacts from all the corners of the world end up there? In the absence of evidence, archaeologists have been forced to rely on pure conjecture. There's no telling what purpose these structures served, nor what became of their builders. Could it be that a lost civilization constructed these buildings? Perhaps an ancient race that had a mysterious goal we can't even begin to understand. Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this. We'll see you in the next one.